Welcome to today's session. It's titled, Planning for Uncertainty, Bold Moves to Recapture Growth. I'm Hari Shankar, Group Vice President of Enterprise Performance Management Products at Oracle. I'll be your moderator today. I'm thrilled to be joined by Michelle Tam, a senior expert and associate partner in the Corporate Business Functions Group at McKinsey & Company. Michelle has a lot of experience in this area and she'll be sharing some recent research from McKinsey on this topic to help us all plan and forecast more effectively and really turbocharge the role of financial planning and analysis in leading our businesses through today's uncertainty. Welcome, Michelle. Thanks for having me, Hari. Uh, great, let's get started. My first, first question really goes to the heart of our discussion today. In your research on how CFOs can help their organizations return to growth and operate effectively in the new normal, you encourage and actually even urge CFOs to make some bold moves in a few key areas. Let's start by having you summarize these bold moves for our audience. Great. So we believe there are three bold moves that CFOs should make as they help their organizations return to the new normal. The first CFO bold move is to bolster productivity. Our research shows that during the last economic crisis, a small subset of leading companies, let's call them resilience, pursued productivity improvements more often and more frequently than others, and that helped them create the capacity for growth during recovery. So there's a lesson to be learned, not only for the post-COVID world, but for subsequent crises. The second CFO bold move was to strengthen the balance sheet and reevaluate the investment portfolio. We think CFOs should take this opportunity to perform cleanup on the balance sheet. For instance, refinancing debt, reducing inventory, revisiting payables and receivables terms, and so on. This can extend financial flexibility while keeping everyone focused on key metrics. Additionally, CFOs should guide peer executives in a review of major R&D, IT, and capital projects and use this opportunity to optimize the company's investment portfolio. It's very likely that businesses' initial projected returns on investment will have changed significantly as a result of the pandemic. And this will be a great opportunity for finance leaders to quickly shift resources to higher yielding projects. Finally, the third CFO bold move is to invest in finance function capabilities. Some finance organizations may lack FP&A leaders with the analytics and business skills necessary to navigate through the new normal. To build up the finance bench, we think the CFO will need to scout for dynamic, proactive individuals, explicitly recognize their performance, and support their development with new tasks, capability building opportunities, and new roles on the fly. Thank you, Michelle, for that uh, excellent summary. Uh, clearly, the FP&A function is at the epicenter of many of these bold moves. Um, so in this context, uh, I know uh, McKinsey also recommends that FP&A teams uh, should adopt a new systematic approach to performance management. Uh, in fact, we're also seeing that at many of our customers, for instance, some of the customers where, uh, who have seen big shifts in demand patterns, for example, from store-based demand to online channels or uh, shifts across different types of products from luxury products to more staple type of products and so on. They've had to reimagine their planning processes and some of them, what they're doing is sort of uh, uh, tightly linking and aligning their financial planning processes with their operational planning processes, sometimes called the integrated business planning. Right. So these kinds of ideas are starting to take shape here. So really, when you talk about this new approach to performance management, I would like you to sort of drill down into it and say, why do we need this? And what are some of the key elements that you see as uh, uh, core elements of uh, this new approach? Great. So first on the why, we think few FP&A leaders have probably encountered the degree of uncertainty that they're experiencing now. And they probably haven't ever been asked to conjure up a crystal ball in a matter of days and make the most important decisions their companies have ever faced. As a result of the new normal, we think a more systematic approach to performance management will allow the CFO and the finance team to quickly alert the company to options and opportunities that might be emerging. 
So we think specifically the financial planning team should focus on five steps. First, get a clear view of the company's starting position using a driver-based model and a cross-functional team of experts, perhaps from supply chain and the commercial functions offering input. Second, build a fact base based on current trends and use it to develop a range of scenarios. That includes a do nothing scenario, but we'd recommend at least three or four and ensure that they're looking at a momentum case for each scenario, which excludes the impact of any intervening investments. We've definitely seen that uh, scenario based planning approach sort of take hold with many of our customers. So, you know, uh, several of our customers are doing, as you suggested, you know, a baseline, a best case, worst case type of thing. And, um, you know, what is interesting is they're not just doing these scenarios, but they're revisiting these scenarios very actively, you know, sometimes on a monthly basis, sometimes on, even on a weekly basis. And the second thing that we're seeing with some of the customers is they're saying, you know what, this handful of scenarios don't capture everything that we need to capture. So we're going to start using advanced techniques like Monte Carlo simulation to do a whole range of scenarios, dozens of scenarios, uh, perhaps, to start doing things like you know risk risk based planning or risk adjusted modeling so we are starting to see some of these more advanced concepts that we've all talked about for a long time really start to take hold with our customers today i totally agree with that i particularly like the four scenario approach so that you don't just anchor on the middle scenario that's a great point Harry. the third step that we recommend financial planning teams focus on is to align on a financial plan with the direction of travel so what are the most likely scenarios or scenario and then build detailed financial plans if each scenario were to actually occur. Fourth, we think that financial planning teams should determine the best actions and moves as part of the lead scenario. So including identifying the right set of initiatives and defining execution plans that might include resources, metrics and timelines for each action. And finally, we believe that teams need to identify the trigger points that will prompt the business to adjust and adapt forecasts and financial plans readily. What are the right KPIs to track? We think it should just be the five or 10 that really matter so that they don't lose the forest through the trees if they're tracking too many. And then build a dashboard to review those KPIs on a weekly or sometimes even daily basis so that they can identify when that trigger point has been reached. I have to agree with you on that uh, metrics that matter point because uh, you know we are seeing that uh, sort of uh, uh, repeated to us by many of our customers and interestingly one pattern we are seeing this uh, again line, lines up with uh, what you talked about in terms of driver based planning is that increasingly finance is looking at metrics that that are not just financial in nature many of the metrics and kpis uh, that finance pays close attention to these days are operational in nature because uh, some of the leading uh, FPNA folks believe that you know I need to monitor operational metrics because they are leading indicators of financial performance. So it's a combination of financial and operational metrics. But as you rightly said, it's not dozens of metrics. It's perhaps five to ten metrics that really sort of tell you what's going on in the business. Totally agree. Excellent. So uh, again, like I said, in many of our conversations, we are seeing that scenario based modeling and planning has become a board level topic at many of our customers. Right. So in that sense, you know, FPNA teams are now establishing, uh, again, to your point, a whole new range of capabilities to deal with this crisis, you know, scenario modeling, rapid planning and forecasting, new KPIs, dashboards and so on. Right. So but one of the questions that we often get back from our customers is, okay, this is great. We're doing a lot of things uh, to manage through the crisis, uh, but once the crisis is done, we're all hoping it'll be done soon. What do we do in terms of operationalizing or institutionalizing some of these best practices on a go forward basis? So which ones should we pick and institutionalize uh, forever, right? So uh, can you talk a little bit about which ones of these do you see as keepers? Great. We think that there's a variety of choices that companies can make in the new normal. None of these are right for every company. So it really is up to each organization to identify what's right for them. But we think in the new normal, companies could choose to 
perhaps permanently shift to shorter planning cycles. So a shorter time horizon for their forecasts and their planning. They could also increase emphasis on scenario planning of those underlying business drivers that we've already talked about. They could have more frequent reviews of KPIs to identify those trigger points that I mentioned. Or they could build more zero-based budgeting models to really improve their resource reallocation. On this point, McKinsey's research actually suggests that more than two-thirds of companies have improving cost management as a top priority, and more than half of companies are looking at changing their forecasting processes to improve resource reallocation, including looking at zero-based budgeting models. I'm, I'm pleased to hear you say that because this is very well aligned with what we're seeing and hearing from our customers. Uh, there is definite uptick in the interest level and mind share around zero-based budgeting as a planning and forecasting methodology. Uh, for example, in a recent survey that we did with our customers, as many as 30% of the participants indicated that uh, uh, they're interested in uh, looking into zero-based budgeting and perhaps adapt adopting it uh, going forward. So there's definite alignment with what we're seeing as well. That certainly resonates with my experience as well. Another point that we think that companies might choose to do is to really empower their FP&A teams to act as sentinels for recovery and resilience. One last capability that we see organizations thinking about in the new normal is to explore automation capability, which can really help free up time for the finance function to be much more strategic in terms of their strategic partnership and focus on value creation, as opposed to in the past, some of the more transactional or process oriented tasks that they might have spent their time on. One of the ways to really turbocharge the FPNA function is to sort of explore the potential of automation. However, you know, in a recent survey done by AICPA, 25% uh, of respondents in that webcast poll cited the need to better understand the capabilities of technology. Right, so there is a lack of understanding or there is a desire to have a greater understanding here. So let's talk about this. So where do you see technologies such as, uh, you know, robotic process automation, artificial intelligence or machine learning? I mean, these are all terms that we hear often these days, but how do you see them helping to turbocharge the role of FP&A? Uh, so, you know, I, I would like you to really take this a level deeper and give our audience some specific and targeted areas and business processes within finance. Great. Our research suggests there's a high potential for automation technologies within finance, including RPA and machine learning across a number of areas. But within FPNA in particular, we believe 45 to 55 percent of tasks are either highly automatable or fully automatable. Specifically, we're starting to see more management reporting being generated by RPA. And leading organizations are going as far as to leverage machine learning and natural language generation to support reporting and, for example, sometimes variants drill down, as an example. Basic commentary and some of the reporting narrative that was previously created by FPNA employees. Some organizations are also seeing machine learning to support continuous forecasting. We believe these are important. These technologies free up FP&A time from some of the more routine activities so that they can focus on the much more value added activities, such as analyzing the opportunities that are suggested by those reports. Really the strategic thought partnership that comes from translating the output of those reports into action and driving performance management. I think we are very well aligned with uh, what you just said on this topic. Let me expand on this a little bit and provide uh, some perspectives from Oracle. We are seeing two themes as important enablers of FPNA going forward. I think uh, the first one really is, as you said, automation of activities that are lower value added across the finance function, right? So again, this is substantiated. This is not just our opinion. It's just substantiated by what we hear from our customers. Um, in a sponsored research that we did last year, uh, over 80% of finance executives believe that most activities related to the financial close process will likely be automated within the next five years. So again, uh, goes to what you said about automate what you can and focus on the high value add activities. That's the first theme. The second theme is really about how can we enable higher quality decisions using 
insights powered by AI and machine learning running across not only financial data, but a combination of financial and operational data. Okay. So the same study I mentioned from 2019 also indicates that 70% of businesses that are using AI and machine learning technologies believe that they have better insights on business performance. So these two themes, you know, automation and driving insights on the business using uh, AI and machine learning, uh, these are very, very important uh, investment themes for us here at Oracle. So uh, thank you, Michelle. I mean, this, is, this has been a great discussion. We talked about really a number of strategies that CFOs uh, and their fp &A teams can adopt going forward. Um, but all of us know that every crisis also presents an important opportunity for all of us, both as individuals and as businesses, to learn, improve, and really reinvent. So in closing, I would like you to offer one or two pieces of actionable advice for our audience today. Great. We really do believe that companies that aren't letting the crisis happen to them, but are instead actively looking at taking some of those bold moves that I described will be best positioned to accelerate growth as we return to the new normal. While some of the moves may feel like short term reactions to the crisis. In particular, I hope that companies will look at investing in FPNA capabilities as I think that is one of the moves likely to have the longest sustained impact for organizations. Excellent, thank you again, Michelle, for all your insights and advice today. This has definitely been a very valuable discussion for all of us, thank you. Thank you.